Alrighty race fans, welcome to another edition of the Workbench. And in this particular video we're going to take a look at some uh, Tyco hop-ups in particular for uh, the 440X2 wide pan. Um, there's a number of reasons why I decided to do this video. Uh, one of them is we are seeing now on the market uh, really a total lack or the availability of uh, getting bulk new old stock chassis to work with. Um, you know, a number of years ago, uh, you could get the Mattel HPX2 chassis direct from Mattel for, you know, $3, $3, I think, for a year or two, and then they went to $4. You know, and we were buying those things $50, $100, $200 at a time. And it really made, uh, you know, hopping up cars uh, cheap and easy, and I really think it did the market a lot of good when we had those. But those are long since gone because Mattel has exited the slot car business, and the other um, source for uh, uh, new old stock chassis is a distributor uh, up the country a ways and they are out of loose cars the only thing they have left are carded cars that so makes it an expensive proposition uh, even when you buy them wholesale to uh, get a bunch of carded cars and rip them open and hop them up so the point of this video is to try to help point out some things here for the hobbyist um, and uh, to probably start doing some of these hop-ups themselves on the cars that they have and uh, we've got some stuff laid out here and we'll get going on here in just a second all right one of the things that I did with uh, the items that I was selling on eBay is I tried to offer them in logical step-ups in terms of price uh, not everybody needs the same thing not everybody wants the same thing not everybody can afford the same thing so starting at the bottom, we have like a stage one car. Uh, we go to stage two, stage three, stage four, and stage five. This is by no means, um, you know, engraved in stone, but it's kind of give you some um, mile markers to go by, and you can, uh, you know, fix cars up any way you want them. But this gives you some just some basic marks to hit. Uh, stage one is just a basic stock car where all you do is just add some rear tires. Uh, the factory tires on a Tyco 440, although they may be nice and round, uh, for the most part, the, the compound's not very good. It's, it's very hard. So, you know, a set of super tires on it, and you can take a uh, standard car and make it interesting pretty quick. And for a lot of people, that may be enough. Um, if your track's not real big, um, you know, these cars had six and a half all motors. They were actually a pretty fair motor. Uh, so that, that may be good for a lot of people. Um, stage two, which is probably more of what uh, myself and a number of other people were doing, is you get, there we go, a set of traction magnets and then the set of tires with the stock motor. So that was taking the basic stock car, giving it better magnets, which gives you more downforce, and then better tires uh, where they're round and actually do some work. And this car right here probably was, you know, the bread and butter of what a lot of us did, just, just really basic hop up. So, you know, a set of magnets and a set of tires, and it solves virtually most problems that uh, a Tyco 440 has. Alright, stage 3 hop-ups. Uh, this particular example we're using uh, the Mattel HPX2 chassis. This particular one has been dyed purple and that and the bulkheads were dyed black. Uh, these original chassis when they came from Mattel they had a three and a half ohm armature in it. Um, the, the factory axle sets were terrible, the magnets were terrible, the tires were next to useless, but um, the, the basic chassis was okay, the electrics were okay, the motor was okay, so if you went in and uh, selected back hub, or excuse me, back axle sets that were actually round, you could, you could work with that, but the, the biggest problem with those chassis is that the factory front uh, hubs were, were terrible so you, uh, a set of o-rings was really needed for that so in this particular example uh, we've got the three and a half ohm motor we've got uh, the o-ring front axle set and the tires on the rear axle set so for stage three um, literally it just so happens to be you have three main components for the hop up you've got the axle the traction magnets and the tires and you know if you want to take and do this to uh, 
a 440X2 chassis, you would need to add the uh, three and a half ohm armature. But in this particular configuration, um, your performance is not so great where you tax the factory gear sets um, to, to the point to where they start to fail. The one thing you have to realize is the original axle sets in these uh, Taika Mattel cars was nylon, this gray material here, and uh, it, it's quite soft and as long as you don't wreck too hard it's, it's okay, but if you have a lot of bad wall shots uh, you'll start to fold teeth over on this uh, crown gear. Pinion gear is not so bad, but once, once you get a tooth folded over on the, uh, the crown gear and keep running it, then that'll eventually cause the, uh, the pinion gear to sort of unravel too. But this was a very, um, a very popular uh, formula right here, and it re really makes a good smooth running car because you get decent tires on the back, uh, perfectly good uh, round front axle set and hubs and tires. It's just really just a really sweet setup. All right, this is a stage four car, and this particular one's built on a Tyco uh, black stiff chassis. And once you start getting at this level, you need to really uh, stick with this black stiff chassis. The uh, the gray uh, nylon chassis, such as the um, the Mattel chassis, uh, is kind of soft and uh, with a lot of uh, extra downforce that we'll talk about here in just a second if we can keep the magnets in place. Uh, the, the stiff chassis adds a lot of beam stiffness. Alright, so you basically have to take one of these and strip it all the way down and bring it all the way back up. You start with a three and a half ohm armature. Uh, we'll use the uh, HCS uh, level four motor magnets and level eight traction magnets. You could probably do level ten but with these particular magnets, um, what what you gain here is these magnets are now the motor magnets are flush with the bottom of the chassis, so you'll get um, a lot of uh, effect uh, on the rail with with the motor magnets in addition to the traction magnets. With um, the old factory uh, magnets. You know they're up in the chassis. They're not very strong, so a lot of times you have to rely on just the traction magnets to hold the car down. So here we'll go with the three and a half ohm arm. <coughs> excuse me, three and a half ohm armature, the level four motor magnets, uh, level eight traction magnets. Uh, we have an O-ring front end set, and then we will step up to a custom rear axle set. Uh, because we've got a lot of extra power, a lot of extra downforce, and it's much tougher. This particular one's a 25 tooth uh, Delrin uh, crown gear. Um, this particular um, chassis I built up with a Viper pinion gear. They're nice and tough. And then some firm tires. These are uh, about this particular tire. It's an HCS tire. It's about like a Super Tire B. Uh, but it's nice and firm and it's a little harder than the super tire. You can run super tires, but with this much downforce, it actually works better when you have a firmer tire on the back. So you, here you're getting into where you're having to replace a lot of the weak links in a Tyco chassis, in particular the, uh, the rear end set. Once you start bolting the thing down with the extra traction that you get from the, uh, from the aftermarket motor magnets but makes a really interesting car and then the final thing to help it all out is to increase the uh, electrical system a little bit and what what is easy to use is you get standard standard wizard storm pickup springs double pickup springs and when you use these things you take these little kick ups on the side of the original pickup shoes and you cut those off because those springs will ride down on this piece here and you don't want them to hit that little kick up there and kind of bind up so you get a little pair of pliers and you bend those things over and cut them off so now you've got a really good electrical system it uh, you don't have uh, the, the possibility of the single spring popping out which happens a lot of times in a crash Plus, you get a lot more tension. So the more the more downforce you have, you can then run higher shoe tension, which actually gives you better electrical contact and gives you more speed. So this here is probably, in my opinion, you know, kind of a practical limit 
on a Tyco 440. Um, you can do more, you can spend more money, but after this you start getting into problems where uh, you've got too much downforce, too much stress on parts that were never ever meant to take that. Um, and once you start getting into that realm, then you might as well just get a Viper, a Scale Auto, or a Wizard car. Get something that's purpose built for that sort of speed. Okay, this is the last arteriation that I call a Stage 5. Uh, I know I just said that uh, Stage 4 is probably the practical limit. Um, this one doesn't really stretch the car uh, more in terms of downforce. I think that's more of my point. You don't want to get uh, a lot more downforce because of the uh, um, the problems that it creates on a chassis. Uh, one of the things that uh, you have to understand about a Tyco chassis is they do flex because of these uh, bulkheads. You, you don't have a uh, um, a real stiff chassis arrangement. And while we're talking about that, real quick. Um, I, the uh, the nylon chassis really demonstrate that quite quite readily, and you can see just how much it doesn't take much to flex this chassis. So when you've got a lot of downforce, um, you know the chassis will tend to you know flex on the beam, uh, and then going around a corner. If you have a lot of downforce, that car tries to go around a corner. You get the chassis flexing like this, and it acts like a rubber band. It stores energy, and then it can release it and cause the car to de-slot. But what we did with stage five is we stuck with the three and a half ohm armature, only it is balanced. So we get a really nice smooth uh, motor in the car um, and we've gone and we've, we've stepped up to these uh, Neo traction magnets and they're actually in terms of downforce they're not, in terms of the amount of work they do, they're probably not much more uh, trying to figure out a way to say this exactly the amount of work that they do that may be the better way to compare it to about say the standard level 10 compression molded magnet so you've got a a stronger smaller massive magnet doing as much work as a larger weaker magnet how about that the benefit here is the weight now that may not seem like a whole lot um, but you do have in a compression molded magnet you have a solid mass of uh, you know compressed metals and resins uh, to create the magnet where here it's for the most part a hollow plastic cavity and a very small neodymium magnet and it essentially lowers the center of gravity in the car because you have less mass sticking up so it's it's actually a performance hop up in that regard um, this particular example, we were running a 23 tooth uh, Viper uh, crown set in it, and uh, 723 is what we have in this. And uh, really uh, stiff um, tires on the back. And this car really runs good uh, in terms of uh, smoothness, acceleration. It also has the electrical hop ups here with the double pickups, double pickup springs and uh, it's something I'd like to do more of but unfortunately the parts to do them are a little uh, few and far between in particular like you know, the, the chassis primarily it just there's just not a lot of basic chassis to work with anymore unless you just get a, a new carted car and start from there alright so I think in our final segment we'll go and do some recapping alright well, let's wrap it up uh, what we've been talking about is various stages of hop-up for Tyco chassis to kind of fit your needs and your budget and your your performance desires. All right, so we started with a stage one chassis, which essentially is a stock factory chassis, six and a half ohm armature, and just adding a set of rear tires. That 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 solves problems for a lot of people. You go to stage two, still the the factory armature. We add a set of traction magnets and a set of rear tires. This particular formula here really, really solves most problems for most people. And as long as the front axle set set runs pretty good, you know, it's it. People are happy with it. Um, you go to stage three, 
Uh, we have the magnets, we have tires, step up to three and a half ohm armature, and the O-ring front end set. So we're starting to get into some real performance uh, uh, enhancements with this particular uh, iteration. Stage four, we add uh, level four motor magnets that give you more downforce. Still keep the three and a half ohm armature. We go to a customer axle set. And this particular example has a 725 set in it uh, and harder rear tires. And then uh, the final stage, stage five, we go, we put a balanced armature in it, three and a half ohm balanced armature, lightweight uh, traction magnets in it, the level four motor magnets. We gear it up a little bit, put a 723 in it, so the car will have some rollout. Uh, and then I failed to mention that on these two particular uh, chassis here, we did add the double uh, pickup shoe springs from Wizard and modified the pickup shoes to handle that. So if you ask in terms of cost, what, uh, what can you expect uh, to do with one of these things? Um, the Stage 1 car is probably, you know, about $20, you know, if you can find a chassis for you know, fifteen, eighteen dollars. Uh, set of tires is a couple of bucks. You know, you got about twenty dollars in a chassis. Um, stage two car, we add a set of magnets to it, so you're looking at probably then say around twenty-five in there. Uh, a stage three, depending on what you have to work with, I'm going to assume that you're going to have to buy the three and a half ohm armature. Uh, you're going to probably be getting into thirty, thirty-two dollars uh, for something like that. Uh, stage four, we add the back axle set, uh, the better motor magnets, so you're getting up into the mid 40s, $47, somewhere in that area uh, for something like that. Uh, and like I said, this particular level right here, after you get into about that mid, mid to high $40 level, uh, once you want performance more than this, you can just get, you know, like I say, a Viper, a Scale Auto, or a Wizard chassis that's designed for, um, you know, that sort of performance. Uh, you, you, you begin to fight problems when you get here with a flexible chassis. Bulkheads are flexible, but, I mean, if you like running the Tyco bodies, then this is one of your few options. But you, for, the same, for the same money, you can get uh, a Viper or a Scale Auto chassis and run our clip for it that will allow you to run Tyco bodies so you can get a real performance chassis uh, and run your Tyco bodies but you know some people really like the Tyco chassis I get that um, they have been around for a long time they're easy to work on and for a little extra performance we go to the stage 5 we add the balanced motor um, a little better grade gear set in the back and there you're probably running you know, probably in the neighborhood of the mid $60, 65 or so for a chassis like that. So that's it, and I hope this gives you guys uh, some basics because you'll probably have to start hopping these things up more yourself since the supply, the readily available supply, bulk supply of Tyco chassis that that we have to work with has all but dried up. So what what is left is essentially having to uh, get new old stock uh, carded cars and opening the, the card and taking the car out and, and starting from there. So that's kind of the point here is, is for you guys to start, you know, maybe start doing more of this yourself and not, not relying on a few of us builders that have been doing this for a number of years to keep doing this because we can't. We can't get any more chassis, at least in what we were used to. Um, you know, the days of the Mattel HPX2 are long gone. That probably will never uh, happen again. Uh, Mattel is out of the slot car business and there's very little that anybody can do to convince them otherwise. I mean, they they got too many problems. You know, they gotta, they got to worry about Barbie. Um, they, they're not that concerned about slot cars, if any at all. So that's it. And uh, all these parts that you see are available um, in my eBay store or the web cart. And uh, also Viberscale Racing does have some of these, I believe, on their side as well. So you guys get busy and keep these cars running.